Uh, so I got this kick-ass intro music. Let's uh, hear it. Let's hear it. <laughs> I love it. It's it's super dope. It, it better slap. You said better slap. <laughs> better slap. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to A Bit Unraveled Comedy Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Hansinger. Welcome, everybody, to the podcast where we're going to be talking about the entertainment business with people inside and outside of the entertainment um, of all aspects. People who are just getting started, people with some credits, people with tons of credits, uh, people from all over, just getting some different stories and having some fun. Uh, Very excited to have this first guest on, uh, one of my best friends inside and outside of comedy, um, he is a fantastic, hilarious comedian and improviser out of Richmond, Virginia. Give it up for Aaron Grant. And when I say give it up, I'm just going to clap myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's that like live comedy. Any good thing. comedian, uh, you have to clap for yourself. Yeah, basically. Uh, happy to have you, man. Thank you. I'm the yeah. first guest. You were the first guest on this podcast. Yes. I was uh, I'd have it no off. other way. I'd have it no good. other way. Good. Well, thank you for having me. Happy to be here. Absolutely. Uh, I know, I've, I've noticed this uh, pink chain in your... Yeah, I realized that too. I was trying to be very uh, I was thoughtful about what I would have in the background. Uh, and then I was rushed because, as you know, I was late. Uh, and I don't know. I think Jackson made this. My son, nice. Jackson, who is... Yeah. Um, nice. So that's there. I don't know. It's probably protects me from evil spirits or something. I like that. Yeah, I like to think that. I don't know. <laughs> Or do you see the creepy, the really creepy uh, mask? Oh, yeah. The bookshelf. Can you see that? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, like hanging it's, upside down. Yeah, yeah. Like it's definitely got voodoo. Smashed like the uh, Wicked Witch style. That's right. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's like from Annabelle or something. It's, it's great. Nice. Um, you love horror movies. Do you watch any good ones this year? Um, what did I see? You know, honestly, I love Lovecraft Country, which is not quite a horror movie it's more of a horror kind of sci-fi show yeah uh, lovecraft country was amazing yeah, um, it was super had a lot fun. of like good horror elements to it um oh i did see color of space hmm. which is a weird ass nicholas cage uh movie um okay. it's about like this alien uh meteorite that hits earth and hits his, his like family's farm and it starts like slowly infecting them and they get crazier and crazier and it's just like an insane weird like nicholas cage I feel like every movie he's done recently is all like a little bizarre and a little out there, but like always wonderful and <laughs> always a good yeah. time to watch. So that one's fun. Again, that's more of a sci-fi, but I haven't seen a good Nicolas Cage movie. I haven't seen a Nicolas Cage movie in a while. I don't think. What was uh, the last one? Like Gone in sixty seconds. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> that's so long. No, ago. <laughs> what's the the adventure one with the where he's finding clues and National uh, Treasure? Boom! There, there that's it is. The that's the last there one I think I saw. That's an that's an old ass Nicolas Cage movie too. Yeah. Lovecraft Craft Country was great, though. Uh, yeah, it was super I, weird. And uh, the little girls are the creepiest thing in the world. I had nightmares about those little girls dancing around. Yeah. yeah um, it, that was uh, it was great. I haven't yeah. seen like a good a horror show like that in a, in a long time. That was just like, yeah, and I'm sure having it on HBO helps a lot, too, because they can get away with a lot more visuals than you could like, other, totally. you know, cable they had shows. A budget. Their budget was massive. Uh, it was great. Yeah. It was great. Um, I, so. I did a we did a like a, a horror movie night for Halloween, mm-hmm. and uh, and like we organize it every every year. Uh, Ashley puts it together, and I picked the movie uh, Doctor Sleep, thinking it was like a creepy horror movie. Not very scary. Uh, it wasn't good. It was it was good. It's super slow and like methodical, uh, and I'd never seen the first one. Yeah, The Shining. Uh, yeah, I never saw The Shining. Yeah. I feel like I got the gist. I was like, yeah, kids yeah. on bikes. Haunted like, Hotel. Got yeah, it. Got it. Uh, apparently, that's pretty slow and methodical also. So It is. That one's uh, super weird. Yeah. It wasn't bad. It just wasn't like like we should have gone with Annabelle, basically. Yeah. yeah. Just go with like a, always like a think uh, when you have like a, a horror themed party, just go with like the cheesiest horror film you can find, you know, just yeah. like find like a silly slasher or something like that. Like that's always fun. Yeah. I always like the ones, yeah, they're like pretty horrible. Yeah. 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 That's the most. They're so bad, they're fun. Yeah. Very cool. How are you uh, holding up in the pandemic? Oh, just great. 
it's yeah. wonderful. Everyone says it's it's tough, but I'm like, are you? It's Wait, like really? the best, okay. like the best time of my life. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I mean, I guess uh, the same as everyone. Just yeah, uh, working from home and trying not to uh, go insane by being yeah. in the house all the time. Um, so okay. we got a, a puppy during the pandemic. We got one of those pandemic puppies. Nice. Um, it's the perfect time. It's like it is. It's, yeah, we're home. We can train it. Um, yeah. It's helped a lot though because we could actually it actually like forces us to go outside and walk the dog around, right? Like if yeah. we didn't have that, I probably would literally never leave the house. I would just stay inside. So yeah, what kind um, of pup? He is a uh, golden doodle. Golden doodle, nice. He is a, a luxury dog. <laughs> yeah. All of the doodle dogs. Oh my god! Um, but yeah, he's uh, he's a lot of fun. He's a ton of energy, nice. um, and it's like having a child again. He's just he wakes up at six and he like barks and wants food and he poops and pees on things and you know that's it's just like having a, a kid. Yeah, yeah, it really is. I hate to compare it that way because I feel like people who have kids look at me and be like, mm, it's not the same. But yeah, to no, me, who never had a kid, having a dog is like the closest thing. Yeah, as someone who has a dog and a child, I can tell you it's exactly the same thing. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. The only difference is like a child can actually at some point tell you what they want or start to kind of like make sense of the world around them. A dog just like never gets to that point. No. You know, it's just like, it just looks at you like you're dumb and you look at it like it's dumb and like that's your relationship for the rest of your life, you know? So, yeah. um, but no, it's exactly the same. Yeah, you our dog is like bullshit. super smart, but then... It, with that she would like demand stuff um like she knows what she wants and she can't communicate it but also yeah. like like we have a morning routine same routine every morning but so does she we're like she's like i want my stuff now and we're like we're watching a show we got 30 minutes left we're eight minutes in you know right but yeah. she yeah so yeah. she doesn't give a fuck about your time it doesn't matter it's not yeah. about me it's, it's on hers and if yep. you don't do what she wants she will piss and shit all over your stuff yeah yeah. Stupid Jeez. human. <laughs> That's what we get for enslaving animals, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it comes with the t- it comes with that. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, the yeah, trade-off. Like, That's fair. That you take fair. away my freedom, I yeah. shit in your shoe. That's no. uh equal trade, I think. <laughs> like, no, I'm giving you a home. I'm feeding you. Do you think Looking that it's all wrong? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Do you think that if you open the door and just let Cam, right? That's the name yeah, of your cameo, yeah. Cameo, if you uh, let her out, she would just run away? Or is it a boy? She's a, it's a girl. She's a she. Uh, yeah. She's a she. Cool. She, ah, oh, man. I, she wouldn't go far. She would definitely chase squirrels. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we, we like, uh, live in, like, a pretty wooded area of L.A. Mm-hmm. somehow. Um, it, it's the crazy. last great woods of L.A. <laughs> <laughs> the great woods of L.A. Um, <laughs> No, you're kind of like on this like woody hill and stuff. So like there's a ton of squirrels and wildlife and stuff, which is kind of cool, especially in LA. Like it's kind of, I mean, it's right in the middle of everything, but it, it's this little like escape. Um, but we nice. see like deer and stuff when, when we're yeah. walking around and, and she'll just bark at them and they'll like give us like the weirdest looks. Cause they're LA um, deer. They're like, they're, they're you know, an LA deer is different than a Virginia deer. I would imagine. Totally. I don't know, yeah. you know. They're a little bit more bougie. They're they're different. Yeah, they have an influencer page. I don't know. Yeah, they do. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's uh, it's cool. So I don't think she would go far. I, I think she would probably, she would definitely get out and have an adventure, and then just come back, like dogs used to, like yeah, twenty yeah, years like, ago. I'm homeward bound. It would just be like I'm gonna go on a great adventure, and then I'm gonna return home. That was that was my dog. Like every when growing up, my my childhood dog, we would literally let him out. And just he would run into the woods, yeah. Come back like two hours later. We didn't know what he did. <laughs> yeah. like, a, he had a, a hand one time, and yeah, uh, it's just like man, he's he's living his life. Yeah, uh, yeah. He got into all kinds of stuff. We'd always hear about it from neighbors. Um, yeah, it was interesting. But they lived a life, and then they just went about their business and always came home. Yeah. Um, but yeah. But yeah, well, it's good to hear you're uh, doing well through the pandemic. Yeah. I know some people are going crazy. Um, I feel like it's been up and down here, but uh, you guys are on lockdown again, right? We're on lockdown again. <laughs> Locked it back sons up. of bitches. Locked back you... up. Gave us a little bit of freedom, and it didn't go well. And then you and can't have it. We are locked up. Um, yep, yeah, hospitals are piling up, and they're locking everything down. Yeah, that's a mess, man. Yeah, but it's interesting. Uh, but now, are you guys? kind of locked down like 
from what I understand, like you guys haven't had it nearly as bad. Yeah. Like we, um, the governor just went back and said, uh, so he was started pulling things back. So at, um, they stopped selling alcohol at 10 now. And so like people can't go to the bar. It was like Hampton roads area was like really fucking it up for everyone. Yeah. Like everyone was still going to bars and stuff. And it's like, that's dumb. Just don't do that. Like you'll be yeah. fine for like a year. Just don't do it for a year. You'll be good. It'd be better for your health probably anyway. Um, but yeah, so like we still can go to restaurants and still sit inside. Uh, you probably shouldn't like, I don't, I just get to go food all the time. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, he hasn't pulled it back too much. And then my son Jackson was supposed to go to school, but mm-hmm. they, um, said, nah, probably not. So they're going to hold on that. So probably the, I think there's a good chance we're probably heading toward the same direction. Yeah. The problem with Virginia versus California is that Virginia can still be very red in a lot of mm. places yeah. and conservative. And so there are people who actively are like, we're not going to do that. Right. Um, yeah. And so, you know, that's the thing that's part of it too. It's like that delicate balance Yep. of a state that's like half red, half blue. So, yeah, I get it. Yep. Um, yeah, it's interesting. So now, to turn it to like somewhat like uh to talk about comedy and stuff out there oh yeah like the, the purpose of the podcast God, right. i yeah. like this this is great <laughs> this is great i love it but i do want to talk about it because i like sure. it's interesting because i because you guys are open for stuff are, are comedy yeah. shows happening there or there well so like the coalition <laughs> theater which is the theater um the improv theater that i had been performing out of um and doing shows out of mm-hmm. it isn't open um so i think I don't think there's anything that says we couldn't do it. I think we yeah. just have made the choice to not do it. Um, yeah, that's cool. Our, our, our space is really small too. So there's not like a great way we could distance and then still like we would be, there'd still be like way too much like closeness, I think. Yeah. Um, so those aren't, those shows aren't happening. Mm-hmm. They're, they're doing like virtual classes. Um, so virtual standup classes, writing classes, which is great. Like those cool. have been doing pretty well. Um, I know that there are places in Richmond still doing um, standup shows. Hmm. at least they were like in the summertime like when they could have kind of like how Chappelle had it you know where it's like outdoors and there's like seats that are separated yeah um and so there's been some of that that I've seen um but I personally have not done a lick of comedy or show stuff in like nine months and it's it's crazy it's 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 probably the longest it's been since I've not done a show since like for like since I started doing them you know yeah college when we were yeah. doing shows so it's it's super weird um i haven't either i i have not done uh shows from since i got back um which is yeah. kind of weird too coming back into the scene from having moved from atlanta back to here and uh just started getting back into it and finding some new shows again and yeah when all this happened it's like some people are still doing stuff and uh some people are doing like the zoom shows and stuff like that uh, which is interesting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just kind of turned to other things like, you know, started doing the sketches and stuff like that and just mm-hmm. finding other outlets. Uh, like, a like a podcast? Like a podcast. We don't know when we're going back, guys. We don't know. Mm-hmm. Like, I was listening to some people uh, recently were talking about live comedy not happening until like 2022. And I'm like, this is crazy. Yeah. Hopefully that's not the case, but. Yeah. Well, the, the great thing though, is that like, we definitely live in a time where it's so incredibly easy to create things and like yeah. put them out. Um, and so like, it's very easy to do that. I, the trouble that I have is that like with all of this happening and like working all day and then my son is also in school. So I'm like half a teacher as well. And then yeah. by the time I get to the end, I'm just like, I have no creative energy left in me. It's just, it's just gone. I've had, no like you know nothing has popped inside of me that's just like i need to do this i need to create you know i'm just like exhausted all the time yeah Um, that's the one shitty part of it (laughs) yeah i mean i totally get that and like i think in the beginning when those stimulus checks hit boom i was creating like crazy (laughs) inspiration man not a word in the world and then uh and then things started taking a turn and then you're like then it's more comedy has to take a back seat because it's all about like hey i gotta find you know i gotta pay some bills i gotta make things happen so yeah I um gotta survive gotta survive but um you know i'm looking forward to i'm starting to kind of get back into stuff and i think i'm yeah. you know, thinking about trying out some of these zoom shows and stuff just to do something even if it's not like building you know materials still working that muscle you know and sure uh because it's it's weird 
It's weird not performing. I know. It's going to be like when the things do come back, I'm always like very curious about what it will look like. Not just like physically, like the spaces and stuff, but like Mm -hmm. what will comedy be after? You know, is it going to be just like all bits about like disease and stuff? And I'm like, like, what does that look like after like a society goes through something like this? I don't know. Yeah. It'll be interesting. I think that's part of why I haven't been on stage a lot is is because it's like, what am I going to talk about? What's like, what's what's relevant right now that really, you know, I haven't been writing in, in terms of like stand up and stuff right now. So it's kind of like, what, what bits are really relevant? I mean, yeah, but- can be like, oh, the, how, remember the movie theaters? And you're like, I don't know, nobody's been in the movie. <laughs> right. You know, it's like nobody's going right now. So you just did the uh, airplane food bit, um, yeah. but about movie theaters? Like, yeah, let me tell you about movie theaters. Movie theaters, yeah. Um, but yeah. I know, like, the things just don't seem funny. Yeah. <laughs> I'm having a hard yeah. time with yeah. things being funny, you know, but. Yep. Yeah. It's weird time. It'll bounce back, I think. I think it'll come back. Yeah. People will be itching for like entertainment and fun. Like when all of this crap is over. So it's gonna I think be crazy. I think it's gonna be like a, it's gonna be like the sixties or something, you know? It's gonna be like a war in fucking I think everywhere. People are gonna go crazy. Lots you of can fucking. be fucking everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Drugs, sex, money, sixties. You, you thought there were babies before when this thing started. <laughs> Wait till it's over. Yeah, see? That's where the baby boomers is gonna be baby yep. boomer too. Yep. Baby boomer. Baby again. boomers day out. <laughs> <laughs> Babies boom again. <laughs> the sequel. Uh, um, yeah. But you've been I like, see so, you, so we've been doing comedy what like uh it's almost twelve years now, right? Something like that. Well no. Yeah, because I'm trying to think like in I don't even man, seeing you tonight was like so we both started for for people just tuning in. Like uh we Aaron and I met in college and we started doing seeing you tonight, which was our sketch comedy group uh at our college uh christopher newport university uh which is i only picked it because they had a sketch group i don't know if you know that that's the only reason i I didn't know that actually no that's how i picked all right so i i picked my college based on two facts because i didn't know what i was going to school for i just knew i was supposed to go uh so that's what society says yeah and i didn't know what else i was doing i knew i wanted to do like something entertainment wise but i had no idea what i wanted to do so my parents were like go do this as a backup plan. <clears throat> so, uh, so yeah, I, I went and I visited and one of the things was that they had a sketch comedy group and the other one was that they didn't require an essay. So <laughs> <laughs> and I was, I was starting to write Looking an like essay for, for Longwood and I got my acceptance letter for seeing you. And I was like, I think I'm set. Which is, Oh man. I'm gonna try. I'd love to see if you still had that like half written like essay oh, or just like at, at a certain point, like the pen drags off. Cause you're just like, no, nope, I'm good. I don't need it. <laughs> it was, it may have been a sentence. Like it, it wasn't, mm-hmm. it was, I don't even think it was a full page. I, I think I was just getting into it. I'd like to go to Longwood because and that's <laughs> oh, it. <laughs> wait, scratch that. And no, actually no. I don't have to write this. So, no, uh, I, I didn't, I don't think when I visited CNU, I realized that they had, a sketch comedy group it wasn't until yeah. i met you yeah that you were like i'm doing this thing like come out and see shows i was like okay cool and i remember going to see a show and i was like i i can do that like i want to do that yeah um and so he looked that's, right at me and was like i can do better than that <laughs> <laughs> this son of a bitch can get the stage so he can, can do it i can do that no. uh, <laughs> he's um, embarrassing me <laughs> um do you ever do you ever feel like you were spoiled by the experience of seeing you tonight Cause yeah. Oh yeah. Like there was it, like, it was something that was definitely created in a bubble and there was like nothing that would challenge us to say that like, that sucks. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. all of our, what do we did? We did a show a month. Maybe we did, we did basically like a show a month. It was 12 to 14 sketches. We thought we were SNL. Uh, it was like 12 yeah. to 14 sketches. Yeah. We had a weekend update. It was like uh, a two hour show. Yeah. It was <laughs> like, like an hour and a half show. show. Yeah. It was um, crazy. But we, I mean, that thing was so popular. I mean, it was so the school, to give it some perspective, the school was, what, 5,000 people or so total? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. So it was like, small. It's gotten, I think, a little bit bigger, but it, yeah, it was pretty yeah. small. And, and so there wasn't a lot to do either. So when we had a show, it was like a thing, and we would pack out, it would be like 250 to 400 people. Like, there yeah. were shows where we were breaking fire code at points. And then, like, I mean, I remember there were times where, like, friends of yours would bring signs with your name on it and like yeah for the intros and stuff like it was crazy like we got 
it was it was too good. Yeah, uh, yeah, it definitely it was, was a dream. Yeah, because you just invite all your friends, yeah. and it doesn't matter if the sketches are any good. Like they're they're gonna laugh and have a good time. And yeah, like, I think I think for the most part the sketches weren't bad though. Like I don't think it was like horrible. No, but the thing was too is that because it was in a bubble, all we had to. I mean, we just wrote about what we knew, which was like yeah. about the school. So yeah, I, like I would invite my parents and I, they had to have been in the dark uh, through all of it. Oh, sure. There's a lot of inside, like jokes, inside jokes. The They're all inside mm-hmm. jokes. Yeah. Um, but to, to everybody who was on the inside, it was great, you know, and they were like yeah. totally got what we were, you know, making jokes on and stuff. So do you have, do you have a moment like that was the first time after leaving CNU, um, after leaving that bubble where you did a show and you were just like, Oh God, like this is like what it actually is to try to do comedy in the real world, you know, outside of that. Yeah. Um, I feel like it probably hit me most coming to LA. I think that's Mm -hmm. when I was like, Oh man, we had a good, um, yeah. Yeah. Cause even at Richmond, like we had some, some good shows. Um, I remember like some of the early comedy sports because so we, you know, we moved on from college to comedy sports and in Richmond, which was an awesome outlet. Cause after, we didn't really know what to do. Um, and uh, so that was a cool outlet, but some of their weekend shows were, were packed, you know? And yep. so, um, you know, that felt we, we may have went from one bubble to another bubble, I you know, just like a different kind of bubble. Yeah. Um, yeah, we did. It was, um, so I, I don't feel like I felt it so much jumping to that because it still felt like, you know, like, like you said, uh, we're still kind of in that bubble and, and still, you know, it felt good. You're doing weekend shows. And, um, but yeah, when I got out here and then you start doing like some of these bar shows and some of these other things, mm-hmm. you're like, and then nobody knows you also, you're like, Oh man, I'm just trying to win over random people, you know, yeah. compared to just having your friends who are there, like, you know, going crazy. So uh, yeah, it's like your jokes at that point actually have to be good and have to be funny. Yeah. It's, Cause before it's just like, yeah, if you're, if, it, you know college it's your friends and then even comedy sports to some degree it's like the funny bits are built into the games that you play the improv, yeah, like short totally. form improv games you know yeah and like yes you have to be funny and like good to be able to accomplish that but like there's a lot of room to fail there and still be really funny you know yeah but it's a much different beast like you said to just get in front of complete strangers and like yeah. i wrote this five minutes and like god i hope it's funny you know yeah and it's also like when you're like when we were at senior tonight and even comedy sports to to a degree, like we were kind of like, I mean, we, we were it, you know, there wasn't any competition either. It was like, this was it. Um, and it it feels like out here, it's like, man, you're competing with big names and, and, you know, you're just trying to like, be like, I'm somebody. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Come on. I think that's the problem, right? I think if you're going out and you're going, that's uh," you're doing this. Come on. Uh, Am I doing the wrong uh, character on stage is the real issue. I think, yeah. We got to work on that. But yeah, it's, yeah, it's interesting. But um, I think the first time that I I, I realized that was um, after our uh, comedy sports closed Mm -hmm. um, and there was nowhere for us to really do comedy. And I I wasn't really a stand up, um, and I still really, uh, don't do much stand up, but um, we did a comedy sports show at a at a pool at an apartment complex's pool. Yeah, I don't know if you were here for that when we did that. Um, uh, or if that was after you had left. Yeah, I don't think so, but I, I've done a pool show similar. So, but go ahead. I'm that curious. was uh, that was a pretty sobering moment of just like it was a comedy festival that this guy put on, oh, and it was at his apartment complex's pool. And yeah. so there's just, it's on a weekend. So it's just like a, you know, there's families like playing yeah. and there's a lifeguard who's super annoyed with us. And oh uh, that, that, that's the moment that hit me. I was just like, what am I doing? And I, you know, it's, I completely did it for free. I was like doing yeah. it for fun. I was like, what is this? Like, what am I doing here? Yeah. So that was uh, interesting. Yeah. I've had to do uh, at least one of those pool shows where like I'm on one corner and then everybody else is on the other side of the pool. And it's, uh-huh. you're just like, shouting at people i don't know it's, it's i didn't realize that was a thing like a pool show i thought it was like i'm the only one that's ever done a show at a pool but it sounds like well we so our the apartment complex i lived at a couple of years ago decided to put on a show and knew we did comedy and so they from just from seeing us like setting up cameras and filming around the complex or whatever yeah so they booked us to do it and um so then it was like everybody knew us, but like didn't really know we did comedy until then. So there's like, 
what's Ryan doing with the microphone? <laughs> ah, shit. Okay. Um, yeah, it was weird. It was, it was interesting. Yeah. And you're just like, I hope I don't offend anybody because I live here. <laughs> like, right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, that's interesting. It's always fun. You do some weird shows. <laughs> yeah. I, but, yeah. Um, but I want to talk about like the, the Richmond scene because I, I think it's fascinating like what's going on out there because um, there is like, I, I feel like there is quite a bit going on out there um, in terms of like, and, and it's growing in terms of what the scene is. Cause I remember when like we first started comedy sports was like the only thing. And then there was, uh, gestures, Inc. If you remember, yeah. I don't know if they're, they're still the ones who put on not. the pool. They're the ones who put on the pool festival. <laughs> <That's hilarious. laughs> if that tells you anything at all about, oh, about that man. group of people. Yeah. And I'm like, they were the big competition to comedy sports, but they just performed out of like Buffalo wild wings. Yeah. Uh, or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Um, no, that's, yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. And, uh, but that was it at the time. And then, and then, oh no, I'm dying off. Um, let me try this real quick. But um, yeah, it was, so it kind of like, um, yeah, there wasn't a lot out there. And then I remember comedy sports closed at one point and then, uh, you know, a bunch of, of us, I guess, from comedy sports went on and started Richmond Comedy Coalition, which is cool. And it's like a super exciting outlet and, and you guys are doing classes now um things like that so yeah yeah um yeah i don't know it's it, it's just i I'm, I'm fascinated with what's going on and it's constantly growing and new open mics and everything and mm -hmm. um yeah there's, there's just a lot seems like that's going on yeah i don't know like how much you know there was stand up around in richmond i think that was like the kind of the big thing right was that mm -hmm. there was one improv theater pretty much you know it was comedy sports Mm -hmm. There was the funny bone, right? There's the funny bone in Richmond. So, mm -hmm. you know, we, we got traveling stand ups, and there was open mics there. There's various other open mics at bars. I think with like the boom of breweries, um, like that just gives more space where like those places are hiring people to come and do uh, like open mic shows and right. karaoke and all that kind of stuff. You know, it just kind of like naturally breeds those things. Mm -hmm. So I think the stand up scene um, has always been pretty strong um, in Richmond. And I've done one open mic show <laughs> in Richmond. I like, vowed never again because I went on at like midnight and I like oh had a kid and have to work and I was just like, I'm not going to do that again. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's like, uh, yeah, uh, but all like lovely people. It just like wasn't my thing, you know. Um, brutal. Those, those times are It is brutal. Awful. It's brutal. Yeah. yeah. You got to really love it and want to do it. And like, I think if you're a smoker, it helps because everyone like, <laughs> just sit outside. That's what I, I went on yeah. stage and then like, all the people that knew each other already, there were mm -hmm. all the stand-ups in the scene, leave the bar to go outside and smoke. And so then I'm just like doing my bit five minutes to no one. So that was fun, you know. Um, so that like seems very close. Um, and yeah. what's been nice about having the Coalition Theater is that we've been able to hold stand-up shows and some of that's starting to cross over or was before all of this happened, Yeah, um, which is nice. And so like people who were stand-ups started doing improv or improvers started doing more stand-up. And so that naturally like those two things started to come together or before they were very separate. Yeah. I think the other big piece is like Richmond has a huge, just like theater scene, just like, mm. you know, plays, yeah, um, yeah. plays in theater. And so a lot of really good theater houses um, and a lot of really good shows in Richmond. And cause DCU has got a really good like drama department. And um, mm -hmm. so you get a lot of it out of that too. And so I think that was another big thing. Like when we started doing improv comedy in Richmond, people weren't really doing improv. It was like people were doing maybe sketch or stand up, And then of course theater. Right. Mm -hmm. And so then we started, you know, doing improv shows and then we would get a bunch of people coming from the theater world who are like great actors, you know, mm -hmm. and people who are really good actors, I'm sure you're, you know, too, are like also really tend to be really good improvisers. Like those things kind of go hand in hand. Yeah. Um, and so those things started to cross too. And so like now all of these kind of performance arts in Richmond um, are kind of feeding each other. And I think that's how it just started getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and I think if like any of those things were just like living in their own individual silos, it would have never grown out to what it is now, yeah. you know? Um, which I think is, is really cool and, and interesting to continue to watch. Um, yeah. And fingers crossed, none of this kills all of that momentum because, um, right. you know, it had been great. And so we'll see where it goes from here. But yeah, oh, super cool. Um, yeah, because it, it's, it's neat that like even you guys are starting to do classes and stuff like that. 
Mm-hmm. I like, I remember like I was, I look back on some of the training and stuff that I had just in Virginia before I moved out. And it was like, it's super cool what we were able to bring to that city. Like, cause there were people like, um, I wish I knew his name. He would like come back from Chicago, like people who would come back who grew up in Richmond and like come back from, uh, and teach classes and stuff like that. And I know, yeah. um, you're talking uh, about Barry Height. Barry Height. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and then Matt did some of that and, you know, mm-hmm. coming out and, and didn't just, you know, you guys having been doing it now for so long, also teaching classes and stuff. It's, it's cool that what, what you can learn out there. Um, you know, cause yeah, there's just so much. And I think there's something about not having the pressure of like, um, there's, there's a little more like passion in it. I think sometimes there sure. where you get like, nobody's chasing the dollar, mm-hmm. you know? And so there's something different about, um, pushing each other and stuff for the art of it yep. and just, you know, one, one person or another, you know, chasing the end goal. Which yeah. Is- I don't think anyone in Richmond who does improv is doing it because they're hoping to get famous doing improv in Richmond. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's for the most part, I think it's an outlet um, for other things. It's like either practice for theater or practice for sketches um, or stand up, even right. Just getting like yeah. those reps in. Um, or writing or whatever that is. But yeah, it's like, I, I would agree with that. I think that it's it, people just who are doing it just enjoy doing it. That's yeah. why I did a stupid pool show. Cause it's like, I just really enjoy performing and really enjoy improv. Yeah. Um, and so like you would do things like that. And so I, yeah, I think that that's, that probably uh, is a lot of the reason why I think the, the community is so close um, and everyone mm-hmm. who does improv, like it's grown out so much in, in at the coalition theater. And so and that's because of the different classes and stuff and bringing new people in. Yeah. Um, it's just like, it's just grown and grown, which is crazy. It was like what, five or six of us like 10 years ago, maybe yeah. um, eight years, eight to 10 years ago. And now it's well over a couple hundred. Um, wow. Just people that are either actively performing or in and out of classes. And um, so it's great. It's great to see Like that's what we that's, wanted. So is it, is it open seven days a week now or is it, um, like just the weekends yeah before everything it was well, just before, uh yeah, yeah right <laughs> the before time yeah what do you speak of <laughs> um yeah we were mostly doing friday and saturday shows um thir- thursday friday and saturday we would have some wednesday shows and a lot of the wednesday and thursday shows were more for like um bit development is what i'm gonna call it or yeah, yeah. people cool. could like new teams could come and like and work out together or people could come and put up different like like different bits and Sometimes we had it with mic nights and like, so those Wednesday, Thursdays were kind of um, more for like experimentation, which was great. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was nice to have that space for that. No one came in to those, like it, Richmond, I think is vastly different than obviously like a New York or an LA where like, depending on where your theater is, mm-hmm. like people are looking to do something like at any point through the week. It doesn't matter at what night it is. Right. Yeah. Um, but we just hadn't gotten to that point in Richmond where I think like we could put on a Monday night show and it do well. Like we Mm -hmm. did a couple of those, like if we had like a sketch show run, like we did a Valentine's day show, Valentine's day sketch show. And we actually did on Valentine's day on a Tuesday and it sold out and it was great, you know? Um, so I think those types of shows do well if you like advertise it and really build up to it. But if we were to run just like an improv show every night, like it just, it wouldn't do as well. Like, you know, we'd get, you'd get trickle up, you get one or two people here and there, but yeah, you know, not enough. I think where it's probably worth, worth it to keep it open those days. Right. Oh, that's cool. There's definitely like, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it makes sense. I mean, there's definitely hot nights for, it it seems like people tend to go out more towards the weekends and stuff. Um, Yeah. yeah, for sure. With uh, the other thing I was thinking is like, do do people are, like I noticed there's starting to be um a little bit of industry flooding like moving into Richmond. Yeah. I don't know if like a lot of pe- if people started paying attention to that. If have people started getting like reps and stuff out there at all, or is that like is that ever a thing with people? Yeah. I actually had after um a show I did, um I actually had uh, a talent agent come up after and ask like, Hey, come in. We want to chat with you. Like 
we represent like local actors and stuff. Um, it's a place in Richmond called Model Logic mm-hmm. that also does, oh, yeah, they do models um, yeah. and they do like um, acting. So they book a lot of gigs for commercials mostly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, because uh, um, which we call the Martin agency is in Richmond. And Huge, so, yeah. yeah. And they do a lot of commercials for Oreo and Walmart. And, um, yeah. and so there's a lot of commercial work. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of the uh, people at the theater, there's probably four or five that are just like, they're getting regular commercial work, oh, um, nice. which is great. Um, yeah. And so I uh, didn't have the patience to continue to audition over and over. I'd like have to leave work in the middle of the day, go audition. And like, yeah. that was just like, I don't, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Um, no, that's fine. Yeah. But what's interesting is like, I did end up meeting like other people who are um, like production companies, people who are part of the production companies mm-hmm. through the theater and like meeting people that way. And like got, I was in a Buffalo Wild Wings commercial um, oh, yeah, just because like the Martin yeah. just like reached out and was like, hey, yeah. do you want to do this? Like we heard about you and like through the theater. And I was like, yes, 100%. Right. Um, super cool. Yeah. So like there is some more of that stuff that's like popping up in yeah. Richmond. Um, and like obviously there's also a lot of like historical like film mm-hmm. and TV shows that are being shot uh, in Richmond as well. And so there's, I know yeah. there's a good chunk of people who are getting a ton of work there yeah. just as either as extras or you know, have a couple um, parts here and there. A guy I actually did, my wife wrote um, a, a short and he was in it. Um, it's called The Fly Who Loved Me. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you saw that one. Yeah, yeah. But uh, he was in it. He's actually, he was in the um, in the Harriet Tubman movie. movie. Um, right. And so there's, there's stuff like that, right? So it's not, yeah. you know, it's not anything crazy, but it's, I think it's enough that if like, you don't want to live in one of the big places, like you can do work. Yeah. Richmond and like make money doing it and, and you know make somewhat of a living which is great yeah I keep getting like more and more auditions uh for Richmond based projects which is interesting um, that is interesting so you're getting them in LA but I'm, I'm getting them in, from in my Richmond? Atlanta agent who oh, okay is, but and when I was out in Atlanta I was getting stuff from like for Richmond also yeah that makes sense uh, so like more East Coast kind of yeah. yeah um but yeah, like more and more stuff popping up. Netflix, I think, was thinking about opening a studio up there at one point. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if it ever, you know, where that's going at this point. But uh, it's interesting, though. <laughs> I think back, uh, maybe think on on the first commercial that you and I shot together which would completely date us because it was for circuit city yeah okay listen to this <laughs> shit listen to this shit so there's a guy i work with now at carmax yeah right? um so when circuit city closed down a lot of those people went and worked for carmax okay like, that's kind of how carmax became uh, a thing oh, and so yeah. the guy who directed that video his name is Scott uh, Lagi. Okay. He is a copywriter on the team that I work for at CarMax. Oh, and like, I saw him, I was like, oh my God. And he was like, yeah, I remember you. And <laughs> so then I showed everyone the video. It oh, exists. Like, if you God. look it up on YouTube, it still, it still exists. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think horrible, I'm, but it's, yeah. it's still there. Yeah. It's funny. My, my dad's still like, you got to tell people about that. And I'm like, dad. If people think the last, like this was like years ago before I finally booked some other stuff, like commercial yeah. work. But before that, they were like, you got to show off this. You were in a, a Circuit City ad. And I was like, dad, that dates me so bad. Like, oh, yeah. To, to <laughs> the be last like, job they, I know it, they know exactly when that was shot or like the last <laughs> possible time. That's not like I was in a Ford and they couldn't date it. You know, it's like, right. It's like, no, Circuit City's dead. <laughs> like, what was the product? It was the flip camera. The, the flip camera. Flip yeah. video camera. Yeah. Flip video camera. Yeah. Oh, my God. It was uh, fun, though. We were just doing, like, college pranks for the weekend. Yeah. And I was like, I had just moved to Richmond or, you know, not long. Like, we had just moved in together into an apartment in downtown yeah. Richmond. And so to get that and get paid a couple hundred dollars for a day's of worth of work was great. You know, yeah. it's like, that was awesome. You yeah. Know? That was so, super fun. Yeah. Oh man, that one was it's hilarious. So you should definitely not put that on the resume. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it won't. Yeah, yeah. Never. Oh man. But uh, so let's talk about this too, because I know um, you just, you mentioned the fly who loved me, uh, mm-hmm. which uh, was accepted into a festival. Also. Yeah. Do you guys do a lot of like? Uh, ha- have you gotten into multiple? I know it was in the one. Was it? Has it gone into others since? Well, so we submitted that one to four or five. It got into two. 
we got into a local one in Richmond, the Poe Film Festival. Um, and then I'm trying to remember the other one it got into. It was one of those things where like we just blitz submitted it to every possible thing that we could. Yeah. Um, and so I, I think we got a couple of them, which is good. Nice. Um, that mini or mini it's not a mini series, um, but it's like the web series uh, Nest um, mm-hmm. that I did with yeah, yeah. Uh, a couple of friends here. That one uh, we submitted to the New York Television and Film Festival, and actually got into that one. So that was fun. So we got to go to New York and um, awesome. and be a part of that. I think that festival has since shut down, like after <laughs> that year. <laughs> so we always talk about it, it's like. We were so bad. We single-handedly should. It was like, there's no more talent left in the world. Shut oh, it down. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but yeah, like a couple of those things. Oh, like my man. is uh, a writer um, yeah. and, um, and does comedy. And so, like, we have done a couple projects together, which has been great. And so, mm. a lot of that is, you know, either screenplays or shorts. Yeah. And then just trying to blitz submit those things out to as many possible places. Um, yeah. I know Rachel's had things on the blacklist too, um, which uh, I know is, uh, I don't think we've gotten anything crazy there yet, but you know, it's just constant what? trying to get exposure. Uh, like features? Mm-hmm. Nice. Do you know my brother reads for the blacklist? I didn't know he read, I didn't know he read for the blacklist, but I know that he was working for a writer at one point. So I had he, sent him a, a screenplay that we ri- had written um, yeah. to get his feedback on it. It was great. The dude like, I can't like when Rachel writes a screenplay and like, can you read this? It takes me weeks. I'm like yeah. either just dumb or slow. It takes me so long to get through. I'm just like not a fast reader, but I sent it to your brother and within like hours he came back and was like, Hey, and he wrote me like a two page, like th- I was like, how did you read it that fast? Yeah. And like, I knew he read it too. It wasn't like he just was bullshitting. I was like, you actually read every part of that. Yeah. I was like, that was very impressive, sir. So like, Something he's done as, as a, on the writing path, he's always had to do coverage. Yeah. Uh, when he, from the time he worked at agencies and then um, uh, when he was in between jobs, he would always work for the blacklist and he would read scripts and do coverage and send it back to like, you know, whoever's in charge of the blacklist. Yeah. And actually he's basically doing that same kind of stuff for Netflix now. Oh, nice. Uh, doing like coverage and stuff. But that's like, it's it's crazy like he he just reads scripts all day and then you know writes about it but he yeah. his notes are incredible like yeah they, I'm, they're like spot on and i'm like and they're always fast like you said mm-hmm. um it's super detailed because like sometimes you get people to read stuff they're like this is great like maybe do this this and this you know but yeah it was just like so much detail and i was like man you went well above and beyond what i asked of you thank yeah. you <laughs> yeah he great. definitely helped me out on a couple things uh his notes like help a ton i guess if you if you're reading screenplays all day you know like you just you know what to look for you know what's good you know what's bad and Mm -hmm. you know you know what ends up being successful so yeah like it's a great skill to have yeah um but that's cool that's cool that she was able to get something on that because that's that's i'm not sure it's not easy to do well like that one is more of a like i think for the blacklist you can just submit you pay them but you Mm -hmm. can pay and keep it submitted and people will read it so you're essentially paying for reads yeah um so it wasn't anything that was like featured on the blacklist. It was just like, you know, um, put it on there just to get exposure and eyes, you know? Yeah. Super cool. Yeah. Super cool. Uh, did you guys, wait, did, did you meet your wife, uh, Rachel, uh, in comedy? I can't remember. Is that, did you guys meet? Yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah. So she did some of our classes at the coalition theater. Nice. Um, and then the teacher. She, I was, I was not actually, yeah, there was <laughs> not a creepy story. <laughs> okay, good. <All> right. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I always think about that. I was like, man, it's like simultaneously a good and a weird story, you know? Right. Yeah. It's like, I was her elementary school teacher. I was like, oh, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, excuse me? Yeah. It turns out uh, if you just wait it out. And I'm like, what? <laughs> no. I guess kudos for waiting it out. <laughs> I don't like. That's still weird, but okay, I guess. It's you about know. patience. <laughs> like, no. yeah, man. It's like, what did you do for that, like, Jesus. 18 years, you know? Just waited. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just wait. I was waiting for it, man. I knew. I knew from day one. <laughs> oh, oh, damn it. All right, we're all going to hell. Um, but yeah, we, um, we met in, uh, at the theater briefly, and then she was in a short that a friend of ours, uh, Sean Hambright, had uh, written called Ghost Mom, um, which was a lot of fun. And so she was in that, and I... I was the boom operator. 
and then we nice. fell in love. Just kidding. We didn't fall in love then. I didn't see her then for like three years, and then she started work. She came back to Richmond and worked at the same place um, oh, right. that I worked at, that you used to work at too. Right. Okay. Right. Um, and so That's then right. we started talking there. Yeah. So That's funny. And you guys both remembered the boom mic? Yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah, she always talks about how great I am at holding a boom mic. <laughs> the best <laughs> boom skill. operator ever. Have you actually, have you ever uh, done a boom operation? I, I have. Uh, it just is for miserable. like sketches and stuff. Like I have a boom pole and everything that I never yeah. use. Yeah. Uh, it's tucked away somewhere. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a miserable position. Like, yeah, yeah. You got to have insane traps just to be able to hold the thing. Like, yeah. That. Like I just, I just remember my arms, and my back hurting so bad every day. But God, does that sound so much better? It's so that much sound better. was fucking crisp, it's crisp. <laughs> like it makes crisp. it really does make all the all the difference. Oh, it does. Um, yeah, if you listen to anything that's like doesn't use a mic and you just get the horrible like hiss for the entire thing versus like a very clean audio. Yeah, I, yeah. I agree. It makes a world of difference. I do um, like a mic stand with a boom pole on it now, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I, I hook it up that way. Cause that way you can just like, you don't need someone to hold it for you. Right. You can just like do it yeah. yourself yeah. or just set it up. Yeah. I just set it up that way. But then if I do it off the camera, like it just like, I hear the lens where it's like, uh, yeah. Uh, like if you put it up on top of like the shotgun mic on the yeah. camera. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. So yeah. props to boom guys. Doing it. My, uh, my friend, Joey Tran, who does a lot of filming in Richmond, He's got like all the fancy, nice equipment and he always does um, uh, like wireless mics. And so inevitably he'll mm -hmm. tape it to the inside of my shirt to hide it. And then I lose endless amounts. I'm like patchy here because of all like the, the random like mic tape, you know, that right. he's put on me over the years. So <laughs> that's a good way to get it to, but I don't know, like, I'm just, I'm not super good about being able to sync those things yet. I know like programs make it super easy for you, but yeah, I am slow when it comes to that stuff. So. There, it took me a long time. I used to sync it manually, which is awful. And then it's I awful, found out yep. later there's been a button that, that syncs it up for you the whole time. Yep. I, like, yep. I spent hours. Oh, yep. man. That's how you learn, I guess. You're just like, <laughs> but now I can do it the long way if I need to, I guess. But I yeah. Need <laughs> but there's a button, though. Yeah. I've tried everything to get around that. And I figured yeah. it out. There you go. Pretty close. <laughs> That's cool. You guys, uh, do you have anything on the, like, obviously the pandemic is happening, so there's not a lot going on. Do you guys have anything yep. you're working on currently or are you guys kind of just taking a chance to relax and enjoy life? Yeah. I mean, a little bit of both, you know, like I said, it's, it's been hard to be creative. Um, we've been working on funny enough, a podcast, um, oh, nice. that's going to be more of a fictional like story based podcast. And so, awesome. um, Rachel and another friend of ours, Mark, has like written out 10 episodes of this. Like, it's essentially kind of like, it's like a sci-fi um, kind of drama. Yeah. Um, and so they asked me to be the person to, you know, to the main character, which has been great. And so uh, we've been working on that, which has been a lot of fun. I realized how difficult just like performing into a microphone like that is. I've never done like voiceover work or anything like that. And so that's been like a huge stretch for me. Um, just like, how do I act here? Like so confined into this one place uh, and make it good. And so um, that's been fun to kind of stretch a different muscle, you know, um, yeah. that I have never done before. And so we've been working on that and we have like sketch ideas and things we want to do. And then it's like, yeah, let's do this film, this thing, let's do it. And then we're like, I'm tired. You know, and it's just like, it's exhausting sometimes. It's so hard. it's very hard, man. I, I give kudos to you and Ashley because you guys, you guys crank out work and you grind and like, that's, I, that's very impressive because I cannot do that. I have like the hardest time motivating myself just at home to do those things. So I don't know yeah. how you guys accomplish that. It, it definitely goes in waves. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it goes in waves for sure. Cause, and then we'll get on a good rhythm and get some momentum and then we just get busy. Like, and, and yeah. get tired, you know, work, work stuff comes up, but, uh, but I mean, on the, on the flip side of that, it's like, we've always wanted to do shorts and that's something we haven't had really gotten into doing. Um, almost did one for a short, short film festival and then had to like go through SAG and stuff. And then there was like all the, it was, it was early in the pandemic when like everything was shut down and nobody really knew what was going on. So SAG was being like super strict. Mm. and even though it was just me and her like 
because we're SAG, like we still had to like register our short. Otherwise you can, you can never like retroactively do it. And it was just weird. So I decided to like, instead to do it the right way yeah. and I submitted it and they were like, well, you can't shoot outside shots. They have, they, these have to be like green screened or something. I was like, okay, you know what? Why can't you go outside? Because of the pandemic? Yes, we couldn't shoot outside. It was it's like, okay, but this isn't a field. No, 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 sorry. Yeah. sorry. Green screen that field. Yeah, but, I mean, literally, you're just going to go out on like a hillside over here. And they're like, can't do it. Can't do it. <laughs> can't do it's do not it. SAG regulation. Um, so yeah, and it was one of these like weekly ones with a weekly deadline. So I was like, you know what? It's yeah. done. This was like, we had the prompt and everything. And so I was mm -hmm. like, it's dead. It doesn't, I guess yeah. I could shoot it now, but I won't. It's so not. you only had to like follow the SAG regulations because that was just part of the festival? Yeah, I guess with, a, I guess just because it was a short and stuff. And because okay. there was, I guess if you were to submit it, maybe if it's to be submitted for a festival or something like that. Yeah, like um, certain regulations there. I guess. Although I don't know if we had just, done it and played dumb if anybody would have ever known yeah but it's it's one of those things like if it if it does well and they take it to the next step you know then it's you can never go back and register it or something so yeah i can't you shouldn't have played by the rules i know man you gotta go gorilla gorilla filming on it yeah it's gotten me a few times like um uh, sag it's it's good and bad i don't know i wanted in it for so long and then once i got in i'm like it immediately bit me in the ass, like within a week. Did I literally, I did it right before. So I, I went SAG right before I moved to Atlanta. And within a week, I, I'd gone on some auditions. And within a week uh, after do, do like going SAG, I found out I booked a non-union commercial for like eight grand and couldn't do it. Oh, no. Like, like literally like a day later. I got the call and like you booked it and I was like it was supposed to shoot New Orleans New Orleans and stuff and I was like this is great couldn't do any of it and it is what it is but there's, there's pros and cons to it but it's like it's definitely yeah. like bit me in the ass a couple of times so man so if you're like if you're not a SAG actor then you can you can only get non-SAG work but I guess there's a ton of actual SAG work I've never really understood how that whole thing operates it's weird I don't know it's it's so complicated like if you're if you're non-union, you can do non-union and union until you book union work. And after okay. that, you have to like basically stop doing non-union work. So it's, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's messy, yeah. but at the end of the day, it's apparently better to be in SAG. So that's the way we're sticking to it. And once sure. you're in, you can't get out. Then you're in. <laughs> They got to beat you out. It's better in the, it's, it is better in the long term. They, they yeah. regulate stuff. There's tons of non-union work going on right now. That's like not COVID regulated and stuff like that. So it's, I don't know. Yeah. They, they do it right. They make sure you protect it in the right ways. So, yeah, but, but yeah, all good stuff. But $8,000 um, in New Orleans. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, that was the dream. It would have been fun, man. Dancing <laughs> the streets. God. No. Bourbon the street. You guys, do you guys have a, a name for your podcast coming out? Um, it's called Split Oak Lane. Split. Oh, cool. Split yeah. Oak Lane. Split Oak Lane. Yep. Okay. And so um, it cool. is based on a uh, maintenance man who works at this apartment complex. Um, and weird things start happening around him at this uh, apartment complex as he's doing work orders um, and interacting with the residents. So um, right. it's weird and silly and fun. And so um, we don't have a link we're doing. I think generally what you're doing now is yeah. creating a bank of work and then just going to start releasing them. So yeah. Awesome. Um, but be on the lookout cool. people who well, are this watching. Will, this will be out prior. So people will be, have some anticipation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, just, a preview. Yeah. Awesome. Very cool. Um, well, I think we're, we're kind of, hitting that limit uh so we start wrapping stuff up but that's a good place to 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 end on because it's nice to always be able to promote you know other people's work and yeah uh now is i'll is promote the, yours watch ryan hansinger's podcast and all of his sh tiny cow shorts are you are you promoting my, my podcast yeah, I, pro I don't have a ton so i'm gonna promote your stuff yeah I I watch all it. ryan's stuff so um <laughs> And is a is the fly who love me is that uh, available for where people can see is that on like Vimeo or YouTube? 
It is on, um, it is on YouTube. Um, it is under Rachel's, um, uh, YouTube thing, which I'm not, they can look up the title. We're going to link it. Ryan will put it over. He'll, he'll do like a a super of it on the thing. Um, but yeah, most of our stuff's on YouTube. Uh, so if you're curious. Awesome. um, Cool. And if you're in Richmond, check out the coalition theater when, uh, when it comes back around and, uh, yeah, lots of good stuff happening there. And then of course, Follow uh, Aaron Grant on the Instagram. What's, what's your? Uh, I'm just Ann underscore Aaron underscore Grant. Awesome. awesome. And Aaron Grant. And Aaron Grant. And Aaron Grant. And I'm not even private. So like, if you want to just creep and like not follow me, also completely okay. <laughs> nice. I yeah. just post pictures of Rachel and uh, my son. So it's nothing super exciting. <laughs> yeah. But that way, when, when stuff comes up, you know, with the new podcast and whatever, you can follow well, that you and get involved. So there you go. Cool. Aaron, well, I appreciate you coming on, buddy. And, Thank and you. Thanks, thanks for, for having me. My first guest on, on I'm, this I'm, podcast. I'm so honored. I've actually never been on a podcast. So really? It's a double first for me. You crushed it, dude. You, you Thank took, you. Thank you so much. You made it easy. This is going to open so many doors for me. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> it will, dude. Just come on. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks, buddy. Um, All right, man. Thanks for tuning in to A Bit Unraveled. I'm Ryan Hansinger. We'll see you next week.